Hey folks, uh, Chris Parkerson here, and uh, Gene, uh, one of our workout partners. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the gooseneck and uh, its carrier, which uh, in this BJJ film was a, a Udagarami. And uh, we're going to start standing and look at some of the biomechanics of the wrist. And uh, also what pain compliance can and can't do, as opposed to more deeper concepts in jujitsu. Um, Gene is a black belt. He also uh, has been a wrestler for many, many years and taught wrestling for about four to eight years or uh, so around there. Mm -hmm. Hey, how much can you uh, isolate bench curl? Uh, probably about 60, 65. 60 pounds, okay. How much can you bench press? Probably 270. Is that around, what, twice your weight? Pretty close. Pretty close. Pretty close. Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, you know the difference between third class and first class lepers. Yes. You know the difference between unity of motion and having some joint isolated away from the other portions of the unified motion. We're going to be working with some of those things. So anyway, Gene's uh, going to put me in a gooseneck. He's not going to put the, uh, this would be a basic police come along gooseneck. Um, he's not doing any pressure yet because I'm going to talk for a few moments. All right, so go on and use both hands on it. It's fine. Now, first thing in any jujitsu, because of what? I've got unified motion here. I'm not isolated. He has not taken my shoulder and pinned the humerus to the back of the scapula or anything like that. He's not pinned it to the clavicle. So I've got unified motion. So I can, two uh, people close together, get my center and stance, which makes him unstable. I just made you unstable, didn't I? I can throw you now, can I? Yeah. Okay, good. I can throw you forward or backwards depending on the kazushi I create. So now he's going to put some pressure on my wrist, and I'm just going to sit and take it. Come on, more, more. And now I'll throw you, right? Okay, because what? I had unified motion. Unified motion trumps technique. Grounding to the earth trumps technique. Okay, so now uh, let's go on and get on the ground and I'll be in your guard. <clears throat> All right, the technique that we were looking at is supposed to have a 10 in pain compliance, like pain compliance means something, um, was Udagarami, um, you, you know, figure four technique. Hmm. Oh, okay. uh, the other way, the other way, yeah, there you go. All right, so now, now you go on and clamp that sucker in. Do I have unified motion? Yes. Do I have grounding? Does that hurt? A little bit. Can I blow out of it? Yeah, I can blow out of it. Come on, come on. Lock it in, lock it in. Yeah. Okay. I mean, because I'm unified, because I'm using fascial motion rather than strength, go on, lock that sucker in. Lock that sucker in. Can you tell? that your, my bones are just pushing into these bones? Your alignment. That's a big problem right there. You are blocking yourself with this technique. And most everybody does. So let's now back off. <clears throat> oh, oh, here, here, here. Let's use the Kung Fu hand. Now do it. Okay, you see, it's very hard, isn't it? I'm not doing anything. Smoke cigarette. <laughs> ha! 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 Okay, good. So, anyway, let's go on and get up here. The first thing about the wrist, and you can learn this from classical ikajo, is these bones pushed into this negate themselves. There's a little pain. If you want real pain, you need to separate these bones and fold them over each other. See what that did to your body? So I'm going to use a grommet. Come on closer and see my little fingers here. We'll come over on this side. Okay, so you see how my little fingers are pulling a fascia here? Okay, and see how my fingers are pulling the fascia here? That's separating the bones. Now that was a whole different feel, wasn't it? I hardly used anything, but tell me if that was painful. Alive in a forearm as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, very nasty, isn't it? Yeah, All right, so now that can be had when I try to bend 
in a circle here. But once I start bending in a circle, can you see if we were sweaty that you could use a spring-loaded back fist? Go ahead and hit my knock. Yeah. Oh, you got jewelry on. <laughs> so you see, it'll slip out. Go ahead. Boom. Yeah. And that's my big concern about this motion. So now, what we have to do is make this a little bit better. All right. Uh, so when we use the gooseneck, separate and come in. Oh, that fell off. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You see, separate and then come down. Okay. And it's a very soft motion very soft motion. Uh, finally, if you want to use any form of a gooseneck for braking, because submission is a slow break, this is a fast break. Hi! Okay, now you can blow through that compaction without separating. And if you wanted to uh, step around this way a little bit. If I wanted to take more than that, I would put my knee on the bicep, after I break it, ha, turn. Now I've separated his body. Unified motion, separated <laughs> motion. Wow! Now I'll break everything. Huh? He's on my bicep. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I know. I'm separating the bicep with my knee, and I'm creating spiral fractures or possibly green stick fractures in your radial and ulna as I'm taking many of those bones and, and destroying them as well. Uh, so that, that's a little bit different. Isn't it? Yeah. All right, so now let's see if we can't make some type of a difference from uh, from this motion I tried to do on you. You go on and get it by guard. All right, so now so I've got some kind of uh, control here, and I'm waiting for you to come in with this power. I'm going to isolate the shoulder first, all right, by doing this. You feel it, don't you? Yeah. Now, once I get that, now I can do that, and I've got everything I want. Mm -hmm. All right. But coming through the center, I think it's charged down the middle, I give you unified motion to fight back with. That's foolish. And then I finally ask, what's the use of breaking the wrist if pain is simply like the shock collar of a dog? If you go one, two, three, four slowly, the dog pays attention. But if you go up to 10 real fast, he goes, oh, I can take that and then you can't control the dog anymore. Then you break it. Well, you know what? A rabbit dog doesn't care. And most soldiers, most people who are in combat, simply don't care because they're ready to die. And that's what you're gonna find on the street. And that's why I say sport jujitsu and combat jujitsu, two totally different things. Thanks a lot, folks. <laughs>